Well, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this manifold here. It has a leak in it, and I'm kind of tired of putting new gaskets on it and still having a leak. Um, I've done some looking around online and found some uh, pretty good descriptions of exactly how to handle this problem. So today we're going to give it a try and see how it works. Hopefully we all learn something. I've already moved out of the way the uh, alternator. I'm planning on putting a new belt on it, so that's a good start. And uh, I also disconnected uh, the uh, air intake hose and the carburetor itself, just to get myself a little bit more uh, ready to go. I didn't think you guys wanted to sit and wait through all that. So you can see I'm actually having a lot of uh, leak around here. This is on uh, cylinder number four. Um, that's the most common area that people have problems with their tractors. This problem seems to extend not only for the 8N, which is what this tractor is, but also the 9N models and the 2N models. So we're going to get this manifold taken off of here, and uh, we're going to kind of see and look how bad the pitting is on the motor itself, and we'll go from there and make our decisions based on that. So now to take this manifold off, there's actually four... Uh, four spots. You can see these nuts right inside there that get taken off. And then over on this side, I should have the same thing, but I've only owned this tractor for a few years and it's a lot older than I am. And some genius along the way decided rather than to leave the studs in and use nuts, they put these bolts in there. So that's going to be an issue when we go to take those off. I'm going to have to capture all the antifreeze that's going to want to come pouring out of the motor. Now I'm going to start by taking off these first couple of, uh, of nuts. Um, I'm using an 11 16 that's what size the nuts are on this particular one. I did have to shave down this socket a couple of years ago just to get it so that it would fit through here. Um, I'm sure that's just based on the brand of the uh, socket that I'm using. Well, like I said, I'm not looking forward to removing these bolts because I'm end up with all this antifreeze coming out of here. I've got a bucket I put down here on the ground to hopefully capture most of it. Well, now that we got that manifold off of there, um, I ended up putting the uh, bolts back in to get the radiator fluid to stop leaking. It kept uh, clugging and chugging and leaking out so we'll just temporarily put those in to stop that from going but like I said as you can see this is mainly where I was experiencing my leak as you can see it's all charred up and through here um, you know to the naked eye it isn't that pitted out or, or terrible looking um, but I'm sure that there's probably some level of uh, of pitting going on. I'm not exactly sure why there's kind of a increase in the metal right here if you can see that little line but anyways we'll get it all cleaned up. So the next step on here is I'm just gonna apply some uh, brake cleaner just to get this cleaned up a little bit the best I can. Now that I'm able to start getting it cleaned up, you can start to see some of that pitting in here. And I think that's where everything was leaking from is just right here on, on this top gasket, right here on number four. Um, so we'll keep cleaning just a little bit more. Well, after several rounds of brake cleaner and, and cleaning on there, now I'm gonna go through and just wipe it all off with a paper towel. and try to get that surface as clean as I can as much oil off of there you know now this draws into a question I know that I have pitting on number four here but I also noticed some other imperfections you know on some of the other ones where I haven't really detected a leak but there's definitely some pitting going on right here and uh, so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually apply um, the high temp uh, liquid steel um, basically everywhere that, uh, everywhere that I think that I need to for where the gasket's at to hopefully repair all of those spots. Well, the product I'm going to be applying today is this, uh, 
quick steel, thermal steel. Uh, it says it's good up to 2,400 degrees. That's more than enough. Comes in this uh, little three ounce container. Um, I bought it off Amazon for about $8. And I'll put the link in the description below for this product. Well, I made myself a little piece of wax paper that uh, is going to go in between the manifold and the motor here once, uh, once I apply the liquid steel just to keep it from connecting itself and kind of get that put on there right now and just make sure that that's going to work out okay. I'm a little bit unclear as to how to handle these bolts here since I have those instead of studs and they're going to just continue to leak antifreeze and unless I let the whole thing run out. And I think I've also decided that I'm just going to apply it where I've noticed the leak and go from there and see if that doesn't fix it. There, that should be good. We'll take this back off and start to apply our liquid steel. So I just opened this up here and it looks like it kind of uh, all solidified to one end uh, sitting on the shelf. So I'm just going through here with a screwdriver and just mixing it up a little bit. I uh, put some uh, some rubber gloves on, and I know that I probably don't need a whole lot on here, but I thought the rubber gloves would be a good idea. I don't really know what all is in this particular product, and much like most of the products we use, it does say that according to the state of California, it will cause cancer. So I'm just going to kind of smear this one right around number four, and then we will get our wax paper on there. The, uh, the set time on this stuff is pretty fast, five minutes. Um, so the cure time was about an hour. Well, we got her all set in there and we're just gonna let her sit here for about the next hour or so and, uh, and cure. And then we'll take the manifold back off and see what we got and what we have to grind away. Um, having these uh, having these bolts in here though is definitely frustrating. Um, I think I will definitely change them out to be studs. Um, this would be a lot easier if I didn't have antifreeze leaking out all over the place. Well, while I'm letting this uh, liquid steel set up on this manifold, um, if you're getting anything out of this content, you know, consider subscribing. I have quite a few different tractor videos or uh, if you want to, when this is all over, go check out some of our other farm content. I think you'll enjoy it. But uh, we'll get back to waiting on this liquid steel. I'm actually pretty excited to see how this turns out. Well, it's been about an hour, so we're going to assume that that cure is cured. We're going to start working on taking this off. Well, it looks like after sitting on there for about an hour, it isn't, uh, it isn't actually dried yet. Um, and it looks like I probably could have applied it a lot more uh, heavy. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reapply and uh, put everything back together and let it sit overnight and come out in the morning and see how she looks. Well, welcome back for day two, everybody. Let's take a peek and see what we got going on here. All right. Well, you can see it definitely applied it all the way around and kind of smashed it in. I'm not real happy with the way that, uh, that it looks, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in there with a uh, grinder and get sanded and clean up that port and, and see how it looks after that. Well, I got her ground up a little bit here, and I can definitely say that the pitting has been filled in, that's for sure. Um, you know, it was minor pitting, but still pitting nonetheless. So I'm actually kind of amazed, you know, I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, the, what other guys have done or what theirs have looked like. Like I said, I wasn't really able to find anything, but overall, I think it worked pretty good. So we're going to slap everything back together and uh, put some antifreeze back in it and see how she does. got everything back together and uh, fired her up and 
it doesn't seem to me like there's a leak there. Um, I definitely have a leak uh, here where the exhaust uh, our exhaust pipe connects to the uh, manifold, but that's a problem for another day. Um, you know, my overall thoughts, I think, on the product are, I think it's a great product. Um, I was a little bit surprised with the uh, amount of set time that it actually took, but truth be told, um, I'm doing this in Minnesota in January. Uh, last night's low was around uh, zero degrees, and it got only up to about 22 degrees today. I did heat the garage uh, with my wood stove, but I basically only got it up to about 55 degrees and kept it there uh, throughout the daytime hours. Um, I did the same thing yesterday. So I would consider that for your own uh, application. You know, temperature probably makes a big difference um, if you're doing it in the summer versus the winter or so on. Um, otherwise, I think great product. Um, I'll be interested to see how well it holds up and, and how well it performs, but easy to work with. Uh, overall, I would say that I definitely would uh, do it again if I had uh, had the same problem. If you'd like to know more about tractors or would like to see more about uh, this tractor and some of the implements that I use, uh, go ahead and check out this video right here. Thank you.